Thanks, Frank, and to all at CBDC who are listening. Since the 1989 massacre in China, our continued economic engagement has fed the country, which has grown into the world's most dangerous, powerful, and centralized state. One man, Xi Jinping, has almost total control of China's economy and a leadership position for life. President Trump has only partial control of the smaller, by purchasing power parity, U.S. economy. As China threatens to become the world's most powerful nation, other nations increasingly follow its wishes. China's actions are now indistinguishable from those that would serve a goal of Chinese hegemony. It is now clear that China is more than a competitor, that category implies that all play by the same rules. Rather, China is better described as an adversary or enemy. It is certainly an enemy of freedom and, and democracy. It is now clear that the old strategy of engagement failed. Strategies must be recalibrated accordingly to defeat China and more specifically its guiding organization, the Chinese Communist Party. This is precisely what the CPDC is doing and we therefore owe it our gratitude. At least five interrelated and overlapping strategies are required to defeat the CCP. Defend, ally, contain, divide, and democratize. All of these strategies are already underway by the Trump administration. However, not at the scale and intensity needed to win. Defensively, we must protect our democratic processes from Chinese national influence, including from US corporations that use China-linked profits for political influence. We must empower our military with not only the confidence, but the equipment needed to win. To do this, we need to consider doubling our defense budget and asking our allies to double their defense budgets. To beat China, we need strong and loyal allies. Despite the canards of Trump detractors, this is well recognized by the Trump administration, which includes extensive references to allies in its national security strategy. We need allies to stop sitting on the fence and playing both sides. They must demonstrate their support by moving their public position away from China and towards a NATO-led alliance against China. Countries like India and Indonesia need to publicly give up their non-aligned status if they want U.S. protection. India, Pakistan, and Russia should quit China's Shanghai Cooperation Organization. We can offer the carrot of security to allies, but we must also use the stick to keep our alliance together. Countries that de-recognize Taiwan or engage in military exercises with China should face sanctions, tariffs, and exclusion from security alliances. We can contain China territorially through, for example, supporting our most responsible allies in Asia, Taiwan, Japan, South Korea, and Australia, to obtain their own nuclear deterrent, which together would serve as a nuclear containment strategy against China. We can also contain China and its allies through economic sanctions and tariffs, which even if they don't achieve their economic or human rights demands, are useful in weakening China economically and therefore militarily. We must also contain critical technologies for economic and military development. This means tougher laws against technology transfer, including by decreasing the number of Chinese nationals who study science, technology, engineering, and math in our universities, and fewer joint technology development projects with companies from China. We need to roll back Chinese military bases and ports in Africa, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Greece, and the South China Sea. We need to back our red lines with a willingness to engage in limited militarized disputes where necessary. We currently have escalation dominance against China, meaning that we would win if the dispute escalated. That advantage is deteriorating rapidly. The only way to contain China before our advantage deteriorates further is to accept risk today, including of the military and economic variety. We can divide China by supporting secessionist movements in Hong Kong, Tibet, and Xinjiang. We should recognize the independence and sovereignty of Taiwan and encourage our allies to follow suit. Taiwan is the only legitimate government of China based on it being the only democratic government of China. The PRC, controlled by the CCP and based on force, human rights abuse, and the lack of freedom of assembly and speech is thereby illegitimate. The PRC should be removed from the UN by a vote of the UN General Assembly 
If the General Assembly does not so vote, the U.S. should disallow Chinese diplomats to the U.N. to pass U.S. borders, keeping them out of New York City. Exclusion of the PRC from the U.N. is justified to stop China's territorial aggression and human rights abuse, which are contrary to the founding principles of the U.S., including the right to vote in genuine elections. This right to democratic elections is also found in the U.N. Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948. If in reaction to the exclusion of representatives of mainland China from UN grounds, some countries threaten to quit the UN, it will reveal their lack of support for the founding principles of the UN. Those that support totalitarianism should also be excluded from the UN and should then become the target of economic sanctions. We can democratize China through supporting dissidents in Beijing and by welcoming China's non-STEM students to the US. After studying history and politics in U.S. universities, these students will return to China with positive ideas about democracy. While democratizing and dividing China is in no way certain or easy, if we cannot divide and democratize the country, we can at least cause sufficient political support for democratization and the independence of Tibet and East Turkestan, that China reorients some of its defense spending to internal security and so becomes less of an external military threat. Democratization is an ideological battleground with material consequences on which the U.S. has a strong and global advantage against China. We must use it to effect. China has allies, including here in the U.S. There is a network of billionaires, corporations, universities, think tanks, and nonprofits that have Chinese national sources of revenue or that get donations from those that do. This pro-China network is influential in U.S. policy circles in resulting in risk-averse and stopgap policies of appeasement. China consequently revised the status quo in its favor over the last 50 years, not only in terms of territory, but in terms of trade, espionage, technology, and internally against its own citizens. We must have been paralyzed by the China lobby where there should have been a spirited defense of values and assets. Now that we realize that strategic failure, we cannot shy away from the new strategies that we must follow, strategies that boil down to just two ideas, proven repeatedly since 1776, peace through strength and the defense of American values. Thank you very much.